Hello, I'm Mr. Bbase one and welcome back to another how-to video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a world template for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, if you're not familiar with this, world templates appear on the Create New screen when creating new worlds. These templates give players the ability to start a fresh world that's been pre-built without having to remove and re-import worlds. The market packs actually make use of this section, and when you, if you've ever downloaded any, you will see these listed there. For me, as you can see, I have two world templates from pre-purchased maps. There's also lists, uh, realms, special ones as well that you can use. And then at the very bottom, there is imported world templates. Now these are custom ones made outside of the game, which is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. So if you're making your very own adventure map with quests and things like that, then when you're ready to distribute it, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do to share that world. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and let's show you how we do this. Now, I'm going to assume that you already have your world complete and you're now looking ready to create it as a template. Now, what world you do and how you set that up initially is entirely up to you. For the purpose of this specific demo, I am using the Better Together Crafters Realm, which is where I am now. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is take a copy of your world. There are some things that we will be doing to this world which will remove player data. Uh, and obviously, if you're still building stuff or doing stuff, you may not want to lose your data. So take a copy of your world and then use that as the world you're going to share. For this instance, though, I've already got a copy elsewhere, so I'm just going to use this world directly rather than taking copy. But to take a copy, simply click on the pencil, come down to the bottom, copy world or export world, whichever which way you do it. I just recommend copy world, and this will just create a copy of your world. Once you have your copy of your world ready, what we need to do is we need to prep this world ready for extraction. One of the things you may want to do before exporting your world is setting the default game mode. This is usually set as survival by default, but obviously if you're making an adventure map, obviously make sure you select adventure first before doing so, because then that way, once your template is saved and created, when the person comes back into the game, uh, they will be set this game mode automatically. And obviously make sure you set other things as well, so things like show coordinates, friendly fire, all this sort of stuff. You want to set basically all of this to however you want it to be ready for your export. So once you've configured what you need, we are going to need to download a third party application to complete the final actions. Now the third party software that we need to download is an MBT editor. Now the one that I actually recommend is one called My uh, Universal Minecraft Editor. The reason being is, is that it's a very simple and easy to use software and it's actually quite compatible with a number of things. So as you can see here, it works with worlds from 360, PlayStation, Wii U, Java edition, Pocket edition, which is now Bedrock, and Windows 10 edition. Now, obviously some of these are console based and you would have to get your worlds off the console, but once you've got them off the console, this editor can look at the MBT data. So you're probably thinking is, what is the MBT data? Now, MBT data is basically information stored about the game. This could be information about players, information about the world and the settings and everything else. Now, the reason why we're editing this is because we want to be able to remove player data ready for the template. Download this and install it. It's free to use. So now that we have our Universal Minecraft editor downloaded, it's time to launch the program and use it. So when you first launch the program, then you are presented with this screen. And for Bedrock Edition, you simply just want to select Windows 10. When you do this, it will automatically get a list of your worlds from Minecraft. Now for us, what we're doing is we're using the Better Together Realm. So I just need to find that world, which is there. You simply select on it and click open. Now after a brief moment, it will open up like this. Now to start off with, it's just pretty much a blank sort of screen, but there are some options on the side here which you can click through, which will allow you to start looking at stuff. Now the chunk locator doesn't work. I recommend don't going in there and messing around with anything to do with chunks uh, because the way uh, chunks information is stored changed in a certain version. Unfortunately, this editor never actually got updated to account for that. So it can mess up chunks newly, from newly generated chunks. So I recommend not going in there, but for the actual players themselves, to remove the player data all you need to do is click on the players tab and as you can see here the better together realm has had various players join over the time now what we want to do is we want to remove all of this data and you can simply do that by clicking at the top scrolling down to the bottom highlighting it all by holding the shift key and then right clicking on it and clicking delete so obviously you are going to get a warning because what you're doing here is you're removing all player data which means that whenever anyone spawns into this world it will be the first player to ever join and there'll be no settings, no nothing set. So you need to remember that if your world requires certain things to be set when the player joins, you will need to make sure that there is something at the spawn point that does that for your player. But if you're happy that everything's set up correctly and it's all working as it should do, simply remove the data. And as you can see here, those files have been removed. So now that that's 
player data has been removed, we don't need to make any more changes. We simply click on the Save button. So now that we've removed the player data, we do not want to go back into this world. The reason being is we don't want to create any new player data. So the next thing you need to do is export the world out of Minecraft. So again, just go to the pencil, scroll down to the bottom and click Export World. So now that the export is finished, it's time to actually prepare our template. Now to do this, we are going to need to exit Minecraft and go to the desktop. So what I've done on my desktop is I've created a folder called B2C template. And in this template, I have placed a few things. So the first things first, world icon. Now at the minute, it doesn't really matter what that world icon is. How you can make anything you like. Now for me, all I've done is, is I've just put the Better Together Crafters logo in there so that when you see the icon in Minecraft, you will see that. You can create anything you like in any kind of imaging software. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it sees specific dimensions, which if we just bring up the properties of this, 400 by 225. Once you've created your world icon image, place it in there. The second one is your manifest. So if we just open up the manifest then and take a look at this, as you can see here, we've got a number of things in here. We're using format version number two, and you can see there's a few various options that I've included here. Now, because uh, this world was created and opened up in the current edition, I'm setting the base game as version 11920. But obviously if your worlds can run on earlier versions, then you can set that as well. Now we don't actually need a description for it, because uh, that doesn't really display anywhere, but Underneath that, we've got lock template options. So I've set this to true so that when the player creates a new world, they can't change anything. So for example, for your adventure maps, if you want to make sure that they can't come out of adventure mode, you want to set this to true and you want to set the default game mode to adventure. You can also lock it to a platform as well, but I don't see the need for that. I've left that as false. Now, just like all manifesto, you do need to update the UUIDs. As you can see, here, there's one here at the top and another one at the bottom. You can simply do that just by going to the UUID generator and generating two different types of IDs. Now, the most important part here is the module section. You must ensure that the type is set to world template. Without this, Minecraft will not see this as a valid template. Once your manifest has been written out like this, simply just save it. So the last thing I've got in here is uh, level name dot text. Now, the reason for it is, is that obviously you saw on in Minecraft, the level name was called B2C Realm. But obviously I don't want this name, I want a different name. So what I've done is I've created the text file called level name and I've put in what I wanted, which is the Better Together Crafters World Tour. So once this is then done, what we need to do is we need to take the world that we exported earlier. So on my desktop, here it is. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to open this in some sort of archive opener. Now in this case, I am using WinRAR. Once it's opened up, it's going to look a little something like this. Now at the moment, this is just the information that's been generated by Minecraft for the previous world that we exported. Now we only actually need two things out of this. We need the DB file and we need the level.dat file. Simply all you would do is take these two and place them into this folder. Now, depending on the size of your world and what you've got in there, that may take a moment. Now this specific world doesn't contain any behavioral resource packs. But if your world does, then you will also need to copy the folders and any JSON files relating to them over. Here's an example of a world that has that on. Once it has been extracted, however, you can close this WinRAR down. Now it's time to turn this into the template. So to do this, we'll just close this window down and we'll take the folder that we created and we want to right click on that and we want to click add to archive. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that it is a .zip and you can name it anything you want. I'm just going to name it B2C template. Click OK and wait for that to complete. And then once that's completed, you'll end up with a zip file. Now, the last thing we need to do is rename this file. Now, if you don't see the file extension on the end.zip, what you're going to need to do is open up Explorer, go to view at the top here and tick file name extensions. By doing this, it will show the .zip and allow you to rename the file correctly. Now, what we're actually going to rename it to is, is that we're going to change the .zip to MC add-on and you should see the block change to a Minecraft block. And that is basically the complete process. This is now your world template. You will share this on any of your sites and all your users have got to do is run it. So now that the world's successfully imported, all we need to do is load it up. So we simply go to play, create new, uh, oh, this is a new box. Not seen this one before. New world. And this will come up with a list like this. Now, if you don't have any templates already, then the one that you've created will be the first one at the top here under the imported template section. Uh, but obviously, if you've got a few like I have, you're going to have to click on see more to see them. Once you found the template you want, simply click on it. Now, as you can see here, the, the actual settings are locked. So the person can't change anything. 
unless they unlock the settings. So this is typical. This is just what we set in the manifest earlier. So if you want the game, the players initially to be set with a certain configuration, so like in this case, you know, I've got multiplayer turned off, uh, I don't want cheats enabled, and so on and so forth, and, and I want them to stay in survival. Obviously, it's locked, so they can't change anything. Obviously, as always, though, they can click unlock settings, and uh, obviously it will tell them the usual it may break. So you can keep it on lock anyway, and then continue to play it as you wish. But once everything's set and you're happy and you're ready to play it, simply click create. And there we go. When we spawn in, we spawn in at world spawn, which in this case is our fossil dragon in the Better Together world. And whatever conditions, whatever map, uh, game mode or anything like that that's set within the game will be applicable. So in this case, obviously, it is survival mode. And if we make our way to the main town area here, as you can see, this is if you're familiar with the Better Together Crafter series, you will recognize this. Once you've added a template to a world, if you need to remove it for any particular reason, then you can do so in the settings options. So let's just take a look at that. So from the home screen, you simply just want to go to settings, scroll down to storage, and then under the world template section, expand that out and you will see your world template there. So simply just click on it, click delete to remove, and obviously it'll tell you that you'll need to re-download it or import it again to use it. But obviously any worlds created with that template prior to deleting it will still remain. And there we go, everything's all done. World template's completed. Now you can share it to anyone and they can recreate the world over and over again. It doesn't matter if they make a mistake. They don't have to re-import it or anything. They can simply just create new and keep on doing it. We've come to the end of the video now. So thank you very much for watching the video and getting to the end. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.